for. And we complete him this much. Amen. stranger wandering through this last age amen and god has posted us here in the heat of the battle in the front line we receive the bullets here and there but the, the armor of the lord will protect us god's armor onward uh, 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 when the saints go marching in when the saints go marching in i'm a pilgrim and a stranger
Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The Lord wants us to enjoy at home before we can go back to church. Amen. We have to go back to basics. Let's sing that song. We've got the power to overcome the enemy. Give me your hand. Let's agree together tonight. Give me your hand.
Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> the great physician now is here. The sympathizing Jesus that dries every tear. Amen. <clears throat> Just put physician if you. God bless you, saints. I trust that you have had a good day and uh, been looking forward to the prayer meeting tonight. I don't know if you can hear me. If you can just wave your hand, maybe then I will know uh, you can hear me. Thank you. Um, it was great to see Brother Ellie marching and James marching, you know, to the song. 
I felt sorry for Olivier, you know, because I could see he so much wanted to join in. <laughs> well, hope your leg is getting much better, Olivier. We want to thank the Lord for a good week, very busy. And I know Friday nights, many people are tired and uh, looking forward to a good rest. So I will not keep you long tonight. Uh, we have a very simple message looking to the unseen. It's a very simple message, but I'm praying that it will do something for someone tonight, that it will bless you and that uh, it will help us to remember to look to the unseen when circumstances arise in our lives. I would like to read in two places in the Bible, the first being in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, just the one verse there, verse number 18. I think I, I have it as well here, so I'm just going to share my screen for a while. And um, so 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. It reads, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This wouldn't really make any sense to a person in the world there. They would say, why would you not look at the things which are, not, which are seen? You know, you are seeing them, so why not look at them? It only makes sense to look at them. But Paul is exhorting us that while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Why? For the things which are seen, they are temporary things, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And we will turn again in the Bible just to use the one story to illustrate this so it can help us when the time comes. Really, I think every time that we live as Christians, we ought to be looking at the unseen things. So we will read in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, from verse number 8. I don't have it on the slides here. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse number 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. So they were strategizing the, the war, how to win against Israel. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and served himself there not once nor twice. So it happened more than twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet, that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the word that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I, may, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, send he did the horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they with, that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and, of, and chariots of fire, round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, 
Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the men whom you seek. But he led them to Syria, to Samaria, sorry. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answers, thou shall not smite them. Who dost thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drank, he sent them their way. And they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's pray just for a minute. Our heavenly father, we thank you for this opportunity that we could come and sing these old blessed songs. Oh, Father, they never fail to do something to us. They never fail, Lord, to rejuvenate us, Lord, and to put us in an atmosphere which is just right for your presence to come in our midst, Lord. We are believing that this evening, though we are separated by distance, Lord, in spirit, we are together in one accord, in one place. So help us tonight, Father, as we look into the scriptures. We desire, Father, your grace upon Lord, the word that it may help us and do something unto us, Lord. Bless those that could not connect, Lord. We con commit them into your hands and we pray for those even watching through YouTube. Lord, grant grace unto them also. Speak unto us and help us tonight, Father, that we may lift up our spiritual eyes and look to you, Father. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, saints, wherever you are. Sorry, it's a bit of a long read, but it was necessary because we want to use this story tonight just to highlight some things which really would help us to look to the unseen because many times when circumstances arise in our lives, we are looking to the things that we see with our eyes and we are judging situations according to what we are seeing with our eyes and we keep getting in more and more trouble. We, and we seem not to get it right many times. So we want to look at these scriptures and see how the Lord delivered Israel because this was a great deliverance. The king of Syria, he thought in his heart, let me go down there to Israel and fight with them. Probably he wanted to take their land or whatever he wanted, but he came to fight with them. And they sat down and began to strategize and say, this is how we are going to attack them. We'll go into this place and then we'll lay traps for them and so forth. But it always seemed that whenever they make a strategy, how to best win against Israel, the Lord revealed it to Elisha. And Elisha would send a message to the king of Israel and say, don't go into this valley. Don't go into this place. Do such and such a thing, and by so doing, every time the strategy of the Syrians was defeated. And it was very frustrating to the king of Syria because he came to a place where he said, which one of you people among my people is for Israel? Who is spying here and telling them our secret? He thought among them there must be a man among his trusted counselors that he was meeting with to strategize, that was taking the secrets and bringing them to the king of Israel because it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it was more than two times that their, their secret strategy was defeated. And he thought it must be somebody with direct knowledge of our plans who is giving the secrets to the king of Israel. But one among them, of the Syrians, he says, no, my lord, it isn't a spy among us, but there is a prophet there in the land of Israel. He tells the secrets 
even the very things that you speak in your bedroom, he tells them to the king of Israel. So this man was like, what? Is there such a man? Can you go and spy out and tell me where he is? Because I want to go and get him. How he thought he could ever get a man that knows the secrets that he speaks in his bedrooms. How he thought he could ever get that man, it's just beyond my understanding. I don't understand how he thought if his strategy was getting defeated, now he's strategizing to capture this prophet Elisha. How did he think he was going to do it? But anyhow, they went to the place. Sorry, I just want to move my notes here. They went to the place and they spied and it was told this king that he is in Dothan. So by night he sent his great host, chariots of horses and soldiers. And the Bible says a great host was sent to Dothan and they came and compassed the whole city about because they were determined to catch this prophet and so that they could stop him telling the king the secrets and then they could war with Israel and win. But this prophet, when they came there, he wasn't moved. They woke up in the morning and his servant went about to look and he said, my, the armies of Syria are around us. The boy was shaken because he was looking at the picture before him and he saw that there was no way to escape. They compassed the whole city of Dothan and he was wondering, what shall we do? In fact, in the word that he uses, he says, Master, what shall we do? Maybe I'll quote the, the correct words. He says, alas, my master, how shall we do? In other words, he's saying, how are we going to escape this? Because they had compassed about the whole city. Yet surprisingly, when Elisha replied to him, he said, fear not. He was like, fear not. What do you mean fear not when we are compassed about? He says, fear not, for they that are with us are more than they that are with them. And he looked and he said, this man, there's only two of us here, only two. And there's a great host. And when the Bible says great host, it means a great host. And he says, there's a great host. And we are looking here and there's only two of us. And there there's thousands of soldiers and chariots. And, and he's saying to me, fear not. What was the matter there? This servant of Elisha was looking with eyes of human flesh. He was looking at this picture. And out of this picture, he made his decision that we are outnumbered. But Elisha, when he looked, he looked and he saw the army. He saw it. It's not like he was blind. He looked and he saw the army and there were thousands around him. But Elisha looked again with his spiritual eyes and he saw that there was more with him than there was with the armies of Syria. So that's where this guy didn't get it right because his eyes, the eyes that he was supposed to look with, the spiritual eyes, they were blind. He wasn't looking right. He had half the picture. And many times when we look with half a picture and we build a picture with a matter and it's only half a picture, we always make the wrong decision. Which one of you brothers, when you are about to, write, to make a decision, they offer you a job in a certain company, which one of you accepts the job before they tell you what the job is about? Which one of you will say, yes, I'll do the job, I'm coming Monday morning. You don't even know how much they're going to pay you. No, you always ask the people to say, I want to build a full picture of what this job is about. What time do I start? Do I have to work on a Sunday? Do I have to work on night? How much will you pay me? What do you, you see, you build a complete picture of what this job is and then you accept or you deny or you say, no, these conditions are not right. Even when a matter comes, which one of you fathers, when your children come before you and say, dad, this is what this, child has done to me. You know, maybe I'll, I'll use Olivia and James if you don't mind. And, and Olivia will say, Dad, look at what James has done for to me. He has kicked me on my leg, you know, which is hurting. And the father makes a decision out, out of that. We never do that. 
we always go to James and ask his side of the story so that we can build a complete picture of what really happened. Then we can decide and judge the matter because we know even in the course of this land, anywhere in this world, they will do that. They will hear one side of the story and then hear another side of the story and build a complete picture. Then out of that, they make a decision or a judgment. But this young man who was with Elisha, he looked and he had only half of the picture. He had only one side of the coin. And with that, he said, alas, my master, what shall we do? What shall we do? But Elisha looked and he saw, okay, there's the armies of Syria here, thousands of them. But then he looked again and he saw the armies of the Lord more than those that were coming against him. And he said, don't fear. They are more that are with us than them that are against us. And with that, this young man was surprised. He says, what is he talking about? What was he talking about? Elisha was looking to the unseen. He wasn't looking with only human eyes. He was looking with spiritual eyes and he saw the unseen side of things and he built a complete, complete picture of what the situation was and he said, fear not. And more than that, he prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when this young man, when the Lord opened his eyes, then he looked and he said, my, there's actually more with us. And we have more things on our side. There's chariots of fire. There's angels. There's all this artillery of the heavenly kingdom against those that had come against them. Then he said, yes. He started to count his numbers correctly now. He wasn't doing his numbers correctly, but he started to count his numbers correctly because now he built a complete picture and he saw that yes there's actually more with us than they are but those soldiers that came that morning they came in the middle of the night and they were looking by human eyes and there were so many of them they covered this small city of Dothan and they were like now we have got that man there's no way for him to escape even he didn't run away in the night, his God must have forsaken him. You see what people say, when you look to the unseen and you act on the unseen, people, they think that you are crazy. People, they laugh at you. People, they think that your God has forsaken you because the normal thing would have been to escape. But Elisha didn't escape. And they looked and said, his God has forsaken him. Now we have got him. But you see, they were looking at it and they were getting only half the picture. They didn't have the full picture. And every time you look at things and use half the picture to make decisions, you will get it wrong. You will fail at some point because you can never do it with only half the picture. Anything that people ever achieved, they had to go beyond human eyes. You can't only just look by human eyes and say, well, there's never been any rain, so we are not going to build the ark. But Noah saw the rain come years before it came, and he went to build the ark. Why? He looked at the unseen, and he saw the unseen, and he went to act on it. Even people that came up with the first aeroplane, the light bulb, the people that came up with electricity, they had to go beyond what you see with human eyes alone. Because the things that we see with human eyes, as Paul says in Corinthians, they are temporary. They pass away. But the things that are unseen, they are the more eternal things. They are the permanent things. And we are called as Christians to look at the unseen, to look and walk by the unseen. And it is God's desire to lead man. But man wants to lead himself. He doesn't want to be led of God. He was given his five senses so he can contact this world here. But he, he has another sense which God uses to lead him. Yet man doesn't want that. He wants to use the sight that they see. And what a pitiful thing it is to forsake your own message like that. Because the unseen things as we hear, they are, they are eternal things. They are not temporary. But we are so consumed with the temporary things. That's what we use 
to make our decisions. Imagine as a husband and wife, and a small temporary situation arises in your house. Maybe she didn't cook the eggs the way you really like them. And then just because of that, you make a permanent decision. Say, I'm leaving this house. Such a small little matter. You see how foolish it seems when we put it there. But that's exactly what we do. We get sick a little bit. Instead of looking at the unseen, we look at the sickness and we make decisions. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My father, what shall we do? What shall we do? These are temporary things that we see with our eyes. But we must look to the unseen. Because those are the permanent things. Imagine if I could drop one more thing here, because when you look with the unseen, the world thinks that you are crazy. They will laugh at you. They will be surprised at the things that you do. But when you look to the unseen and you are working with God, that's the permanent thing. And I want to bring a little example here of the death of Lazarus. When Lazarus was sick, Jesus was looking to the unseen. And they came and said, your friend whom you love is sick. What did Jesus do? He went even further. Imagine what the people would have thought to say. Does he really love Lazarus? How can he go even further? And then now it came to a place where Lazarus himself died, dead. And they buried him. And they came and told Jesus, say, your friend Lazarus is dead. And look, listen to his answer. Jesus says he's not dead, but sleeping. My, <laughs> you know, maybe because we are Christians now, we understand what that means. But imagine if it was your beloved mother and you don't know the word of God and she's dead and you are mourning for her and your friend comes and says, well, I'm glad I wasn't here. <laughs> You know, during your troubles, I'm glad I wasn't there for you. My, when you look and think about it, you say, what's wrong? I thought this guy was my friend. That's what they must have thought when Jesus said, for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there when Lazarus died. And they thought, this guy who has forsaken everything, he was barred from his own church and they sent him out. Now he dies and Jesus says, I'm glad that I wasn't there. Can you think what they must have felt when you say that? But brother, when you look to the unseen, it makes perfect sense when Jesus says, I'm glad that I wasn't there. It won't make sense when you look with human sight, but with spiritual eyes, you look to the unseen and maybe that sickness, that trouble which you had gone through, it taught you some spiritual principles that have shaped your character to be a better and more sincere Christian. And if we were there when you went through that trouble, you wouldn't have been like that because we would have offered you human comfort, we would have consoled you, and you would have looked to us for human solutions, things that are temporary all the time. But because we were not there, you were forced to look up to the unseen things. You had to look up to God and God brought this great lesson and he shaped your character. He imparted to you things that are eternal, things that will never go away. So you see, when you look to the unseen and he says, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. You say, amen. When you look to the, when you look with, with, you, with, with spiritual eyes to the unseen. So God would have let those circumstances come up and they are around you, and there's no one with you. You think everybody has forsaken me. You write notes and you do what you cry, but God is teaching you to look up to him. And when you look up to him, then you see the unseen. He teaches you to look to the unseen and you experience that unlimited power of the unseen. And then you have a great lesson there to say yes, I'm glad there was no one with me, but God was with me. Why you are learning to look to the unseen. But as people go, people want to look by sight. And they want to go only by that. And you have absolutely no clue what is really happening when you look only by sight. 
Your picture is not full. It's half a picture like those soldiers. They looked and seen Elisha. And they were like, it must be him. But they didn't have the full picture. You know, Elisha had the full picture. And without the full picture, you always make the wrong decisions. And that's worth repeating that without a full picture, you are going to make the wrong decisions. If you are any wise, you will look and see at the full picture before you make any decision. And so Elisha, when those soldiers came to him and they canvassed the city and he looked and he seen there's more with us, my, I'm telling you, Elisha lifted up his chin and he prayed and said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant. And the boy's eyes were opened and he looked and he seen, my, there's more with us. He also lifted up his chin, you know, and he carried the beds properly and they walked right into the presence of their enemy. Isn't that wonderful? All fear vanishes away when you look at the full picture. This boy was struck with fear. He said, alas, my master, what shall we do? But when his eyes were opened and he looked at the full picture, he was like, let's go to them. And he followed Elisha. He didn't run away. And they went before the very people that were looking for them. That's what God does, brother. You walk right onto the trap that your enemy has set for you, and it won't even bother you when you look to the unseen. No wonder the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you look to the unseen. The Bible in book of Psalms 23, he says, God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. What do you do with that table? What do you prepare at the table? It's food. And you can't eat food when you're running away from your enemy. So what do you do when God prepares a table for you? You go, you sit down, you relax right in the presence of your enemies. And you eat your food, not bothered by anything. Why? Because we are looking to the unseen. And you can see that there is more with me than there is with them that are against me. Why? The Bible says, it says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world when we look to the unseen. And so Elisha and his servant, they walked right into the presence of their enemies and the soldiers were so blind. They were so blind they didn't even realize that the very man that is talking to them was who they were looking for. You know, they had no clue at all. You see what happens. When you don't look to the unseen, you have no clue at all. Even their sense of geography got messed up. They didn't, sorry, they didn't even realize that the very man they were seeking was now leading them to the headquarters of the armies of Israel. He says to them, this is not Dothan. <laughs> they came and they saw this was Dothan. And they stood there all night and made a, 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 what is it called? A siege around the city. And they were like, he's not coming out. But then he comes and he says, this is not Dothan. Come here, I'll show you where Dothan is. A whole army, a great host was led by a man and his servant, the very one that they were looking for. And he led them straight into Samaria. You see, he led them straight into the Samaria city and they would have remained blind if it wasn't for Elisha because he prayed again for them to God and say, open their eyes, even just their natural eyes. They could see with the natural eyes, but some things, they were veiled away from them and they couldn't see that we are going into Samaria. They could not make the distinction between Dothan. You see, you can't rely on the five senses. They are so unstable. They can be messed up with, they can be deceived, things can be veiled from them, and you can't use something like so unreliable like that to make your decision to say, this is the decision I'm making instead of looking to the unseen. And this is what this man did, but so he prayed for them. And when he prayed for them, their eyes were, were opened. Then they seen, man, we are in the middle of Samaria now. And then the king of, Samaria, of Israel comes and says, 
Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them and kill them? What did Elisha say? He says, no, you are not going to kill them. Elisha was looking to the unseen. There's nobody who can solve problems like God can solve them. There's nobody who can fight your battles better than God can fight them. And when Elisha kept looking at the unseen, and he said, don't kill these people. Give them food and let them go back to their master. What does the Bible say? In verse 23, and he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. You see how when God solves situations, when God is the one who's controlling the situation, there was not even one casualty on either side. On the side of Syria, nobody died. On the side of Israel, nobody died. Why? Because God solved this situation. There's no one like him who can fight your battles and drive out a cancer out of your body that it will never come back again. The Bible says they never again came back. But when man is involved, my, when we solve problems and there's two people that are not agreeing with each other or two families that are not seeing eye to eye, we solve the problem, but this family goes away grieved. You know, when two countries are not agreeing, they fight each other, millions of people die, but not God. God is not sitting somewhere up there looking down and saying, yeah, they are suffering. No, he's not unrighteous like that. God is righteous. His love is pure. And when he solves the problem, brother, there's nobody that goes away with the grieving spirit. There's nobody that goes away with feelings that are hurt and he feels that I've been, it's not really solved. No, when God does it, brother, there's nobody can do a battle like God can. He solves your problems. And that's how Elisha did it by looking to the unseen. So by this, you can see things that we forsake our own messes many times. God does not intend for you to suffer. God does not intend for you to struggle with this. God wants to lead men. He wants to solve your problems. He wants to display his attribute that he's a healer. He wants to display his attribute that he's a provider, but we never look to him. Many times we look to other people for solutions. We don't look to the unseen, but we look to what we see with our eyes and thereby we get, we forsake our own messes when we walk by our own sight, you know? And I want to read for you here, saints, one or two quotes that the prophet says in the message, looking to the unseen. Just looking to share my screen again. In the message, looking to the unseen, the prophet says in one place, and tonight, dear Christian friends, we look at the unseen. That just come on my mind when Brother Baxter was giving that wonderful exhortation concerning the supernatural. The supernatural is what you do not see, but what you believe and act on as though it was. You see where the difference is? Is that when we hear the word of God and it says, by your stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. And we believe it, but we don't act on it as though it was. That's the trouble. But when we look to the unseen and we act on it, then you get everything. Let's read this, this scripture. See? Uh, this uh, court. Everything in the Christian armor is supernatural. We do not look at what we see. We look at what we do not see. You cannot be healed only through looking what you do not see. My, you can't even be healed without looking at what you do not see. And he continues on. This is a different message. 
This was in 1950, but this was in 1959. He says, if these people here, and I've underlined that because I want to bring it before you, that if these people here, that's you and me, in these wheelchairs, yours might not be a wheelchair or a court, it might be a financial trouble, it might be some sickness in your body that you just can't get rid of. So if these people here in these wheelchairs and on this court and you that seek to die, if you could just hear the word of God tonight. And he says, don't try to figure it out. Don't think how long you have been sitting, how long you have been sick. Think about what God says. That's the thing to do. Think about what God said. Don't think of your situation. And he says, when you do that, there comes a pulsation of the Holy Spirit in your heart saying, it's the truth. Because the Holy Spirit will always say amen to the word of God. Because it wrote the word of God. So when you look and you start to think on the word of God, by his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. Something begins to rise up in your heart. He says it's a pulsation of the Holy Spirit. And it says it's the truth. But always when you do that, the devil is right there to oppose you. He says, how do you know it's the truth, the devil says. And you reply, I know it's the truth. It's God's word is the truth. Something begins to pulsate in your bosom that is in the truth. Then make ready. You see, now you begin to act on the unseen. You are coming out of there. Just as certain as I stand in this pulpit tonight, don't look at what you see. How bad I'm crippled. How sick I am. What the doctor said, don't look at that. Look at the unseen, what God said, before you feel any different. My, I love that. Before the pain leaves you, before the hand moves, before the eye can see one sight, yet make ready for it's going to come. As long as that pulsation begins to rise in your bosom, in your heart where God sat on the control tower, now I get religious about this time. My, and who else could have demonstrated this story better than John Ryan? We all know the story of John Ryan, how he came into the, the prayer line. He was a beggar and he had been blind. And his two friends brought him before the, the prophet, you know, and he was prayed for and, and, he, and the prophet says, you are healed. You know, he, he told him his name. He told him, you are a beggar. And he says, oh, that is true. And he says, you are healed, John Ryan. And he said, do you believe it? He says, yes. And he walked off the platform and he came back and he says, but I still can't see. And the prophet said, but you told me that you believe. And he said, but I can't see. You know, he wanted something to do to give him faith. Maybe I'll just read the whole quote. I have it somewhere here, if you don't mind. It's very, very long. But it will do you good. Sorry, it's uh, trouble dealing with multiple screens, you know. So he comes in the prayer line and he's discerning and he says, your name is John Ryan. You are a beggar on the street. You've been blind for years. He says, that's right. You are Catholic by faith. He says, that's right. And I say, the prophet now is saying, that said the Lord, you receive your healing. And he said, thank you, sir. And he said, but I can't see. The prophet says, that has nothing to do with it. You are healed. And he went down along. They helped him off the platform. The natural man couldn't see. The natural man with the eyes couldn't see. They couldn't see no results from that at all. Why? He's just as blind as he ever was. So two of his friends brought him back and put him in the prayer line again and ran him through again. Howard let him pass through. When he come back again, he said, Mister, you told me I was healed. And I said, you you told me you believed me. He said, I do believe you. I have no reason not to believe you. You told me all the things about my life. And he says, I don't know what to do. 
There was a woman back there testifying. She had a goiter a few minutes and it's gone away. And he said, then if you believe me, why are you questioning me? I'm telling you the word of God. And he says, what must I do, sir? Knowing he was a Catholic, he had to have something physical that he could hold to. I said, just keep testifying by his stripes I am healed and give him praise. The old man, now the old man for the next two or three weeks, man, he went for the next two or three weeks without receiving his sight. Yeah? But he stood on the corner and sold papers. He would holler extra, extra praise the Lord, I'm healed. Extra, extra praise the Lord, I'm healed. When he come back to the meeting the next night, I couldn't preach. Why? The man was interrupting and he would say, praise the Lord, I'm healed. Quiet, 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 quiet. Praise the Lord, I'm healed. Why? He kept looking at that unseen and he kept looking at it and it went for three weeks until that power setting began to do something. But look what the people did, where we have on the screen there. Praise the Lord for healing me all right. And they laughed at him and made fun of him. And another little newsboy led him over to the barber shop for a shave about two or three weeks later from the meeting. And the barber put him up in the chair and lathered his face and he said, John, I understand. And the prophet calls him a little smart aleck, you know, he thought he knew things, you know, and that kind of a guy. He said, I understand that you were down to see the divine healer here. And he said, yes, I went. And he said, I understand that you got healed. What was he doing? Just to make fun of him. And that's what happens to you and me when we look to the unseen and the people around us, they don't understand it. They look and say, this man must be crazy. Do you see the things that brother Wilmo is up to these days? He must have lost it somewhere in there, you know? But no, that's what the world will do to you when you look to the unseen. They will laugh at you. They will make fun of you. They will mock you. And he says, I understand you got healed. Why? Just to make fun of him. But the old man didn't let that get into him. He testified anyhow. And he said, yes, praise the Lord. He healed me. And that very moment he said that, his eyes came open. My. <laughs> and he came out of that barber chair. He says with a towel around his neck, you know, and he had lathered his face with this white cream. And the barber man is trying to catch him with a razor in his head. It must have been a sin. Who was being funny now? Who was really now? People would make fun at the barber now and see him running, chasing this man. But John Ryan received his sight. Why? Because he kept on looking to the unseen. Two weeks went. Three weeks went and he kept on looking to the unseen. And one of the days when they had made fun of him, the Lord opened his eyes. What did John Ryan do? He acted on it. He believed what the prophet said, but he didn't leave it there in his heart. He went about and he began to act on it. And the more people mocked him, the more he acted on it. And he continued to act on it until whatever was in the unseen world dropped down here into the seen world and his eyes opened and he could see again. And we are called to that, you and me, brother, this night. So just before we come to prayer, we have just one thanksgiving from Sister Lydia. And she was thanking the saints for prayers for her neighbor that she had sent a request to be prayed for a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, they were saying that he had had a heart attack, but it wasn't a heart attack. It was like a, um, a stroke, you know, his half side went, uh, you know, like a stroke, but he's back home now. And uh, it wasn't even a stroke. And they were talking to the neighbor and he was really thanking the saints for their prayers because he's healed, he's back to normal. Isn't our God wonderful when we look to the unseen? And I would like to invite you tonight, saints, to a time of prayer, let us come to a time of prayer. Whatever thing that may be in your life,
that could be troubling you, a situation that you just can't seem to get around and you don't know what to do. But I'm inviting you tonight to turn your eyes to the Lord, to look to the unseen, because that's where the permanent solutions are. God is the only one who knows how to really fix it permanent. And he'll give you a testimony that will stay for years to come, a testimony that is time-tested, because many times we have a testimony. Oh, I thank God for this job. And then two months later, oh, I wish I never got this job. So did you get it from the Lord in the first place? But let us come to the Lord tonight and look to him for permanent solutions. Look to him for in the unseen realm until those things that are in that realm, they fall down into this realm where we are. And then we will see the mighty hand of the Lord in all that he does for us. So I want to invite you to a time of prayer, saints. I don't see Brother Maxwell on Lying, it could be on YouTube, but uh, I want to invite you to a time of prayer just so we could begin again to come and say, Lord, help us that we may learn to look to the unseen. When circumstances arise, help us to remember it, Lord, so that we don't run to brother so-and-so for a solution. We don't run to brother so-and-so for, for help. And God does use people, but let us look to him and lift our eyes into the unseen world and there we will receive that which God has in store for us. May God bless you. I'm just going to put some music here, if I can find it. And we go into a time of prayer, and uh, uh, we will carry on after uh, this time of prayer.
Amen. Well, we didn't receive any uh, particular prayer requests tonight, but um, we still have our um, prayer requests. Uh, Brother Tommy's father up in Northern Ireland, let us continue to remember him in prayer. And we also would like to remember our uh, Sister Anne's uh, niece, Holly, uh, let us continue to lift her before the Lord and, and um, call upon the name of the Lord for her that she may be healed. And, and also just to remember even our pastor and uh, Brother Vegas and their families away on holiday this time, that the Lord may renew their strength because many times we don't realize how much strength has gone out of us, you know, and uh, we continue to stand and minister to the saints and, and really God gives grace and he continues to renew our strength. But sometimes we need to get away a little bit and then the Lord can, can come and minister to you so that you can minister to the people. So let's pray for our pastor and his family, brother Vegas and his family, and also for Sunday service, um, the people that are coming to church, we just pray that everybody will be healthy. And then uh, when we leave, we'll be even more healthy. And uh, pray for Brother Ellie and Brother Maxwell as they have to minister to the saints on Sunday. Uh, just so the Lord could speak to them and give them a word in season. And pray for Brother George and the musicians that he's going to work with on, on Sunday. So the Lord could lead them down certain songs that would bring us into the presence of the Lord, that all these things may work together to the glory of the Lord. So um, we'll just bow our heads now, uh, but maybe before I do that, I just wanted to read just one more quote for you. And um, where is it now? Yeah, just to read one more, just to encourage it, each other before um, we will close in a word of prayer. So the prophet in the same message in uh, looking to, at the unseen, this is from 1958, he says, now it is a lesson to us to look to what Abraham did. Then not only did he believe it, but he made ready for it. So that's the acting part. You believe the word of God, but you've got to begin to act on that word of God. So the prophet says he made ready for it. He made preparations for this child that he saw by faith 25 years before the child ever come. Because he had considered that he who told him was able to keep the promise that he had told him. He didn't consider any of his nature being a hundred years old, his physical being, he did not consider at all the deadness of the womb of his wife, Sarah. And the writer of the divine commentary tells us that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving glory to God. What a person. And he says, today, there is no need of even trying to approach it with an intellectual faith. You will never be able to do it. You go from church to church, from prayer line to prayer line, and never get it. You've got to climb, come to the place where it is eternally settled once for all. He's either God or he's not God. Feeling sorry for the people, as I was, you know, he was taking long in the message, but there it is, saints. Let us look to what Abraham did and let it be a lesson to us that when we believe something, let's begin to act on it. Let's make ready for it. And you will see the glory of the Lord manifest in your life, which now people can see with their eyes. So let us bow our heads and commit this uh, request into the hand. You pray also in your heart while we close in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to come before you again just to thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father, for this evening that you have given us, that, Lord, we could, Lord, sing the beautiful songs of Zion that lifts up our spirits, 
no matter how tired we are, they always uplift us, Lord. Thank you for those songs. Thank you for the inspiration of the songs. And we thank you tonight for the opportunity that we could come and fellowship around your word and encourage one another and point one another to your word again, Lord, that, Father, we can all look at the lives of the people that you recorded in the Bible and look at the story of Elisha and how he won a great victory for Israel without lifting up a sword by just looking to the unseen. Lord, and we look at the story of Abraham, how he staggered not at the promise for 25 years because he looked to the unseen and he seen a full picture of what was in play and he knew, Lord, that you were able to bring it to pass that which you had promised. May you grant it to us also, Lord, that when we look at our situations that are in our lives at this time, Lord, may it not baffle us, but Father, help us that we may lift up our spiritual eyes and look to the unseen and look at your word and see that you are more than able to bring to pass that which you have promised. Grant it tonight, oh Father, bless your people every brother and every sister that's listened in tonight uh, lord each and every one of us uh, we have some kind of a situation but we are looking to the unseen tonight uh, we are believing on your word help us lord to continue to think on your word uh, until that pulsation begins in our hearts lord and father begin to act on thy word uh, until it drops lord uh, from eternity into this realm that we are living Father, be merciful, Lord. Grant grace, Lord, unto the sick. If any among us, Lord, may you touch them and heal them. And we pray tonight, remembering our brother Thomas, Father, Lord, grant grace to him and help him, oh God. Be merciful unto him and touch him and heal him. Father, is our prayer. We commit him into your hands. Won't you strengthen him tonight? And even our little sister, Holy. Father, I pray for this little girl. Father, you know exactly where she is. I pray, Father, as we look uh, to the unseen tonight, uh, that you may come down and touch this girl, Lord, and heal her, Father, that we may read the testimony one of these days uh, of your hand of healing upon this child. Have mercy and grant grace unto her, Lord. Father, we pray for the service on Sunday, believing, Lord, that you will speak to us again. Bless our brethren that will minister to us. Uh, we pray for them. Uh, Bless our brother George, Lord, in the music ministry that you will use him to minister to thy people, Lord. Father, bless our brother Ellie in the Sunday school that you will speak unto thy people and teach us of thy great things, O oh God. Praying for brother Maxwell tonight, uh, Lord, that you give him strength, uh, that you give him a word in season, that, Lord, you use him, O oh Father. Bless the saints, Lord, everywhere they are, and even our pastor and his family, brother Vegas and his family. Father, I commit them into your hands. Won't you be merciful to your people? Won't you keep them safe, oh God? Help us, Father, to navigate the times that we are living in, oh God. Father, and bring us to the other end. Oh, we pray, Father, as we wait for that day when our liberties shall be restored again. Help us, Lord, to use the time that we have now, oh God. Father, to bring honor and glory unto thy kingdom. Bless us tonight, Lord. Keep us safe, every family, every brother, every sister, as we commit ourselves to you. We pray, Father, that you be glorified as we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother George, I don't know if you have a song there, just one, so we could close with that. May the Lord bless you, saints. Keep praying for us, and we will always be praying for you.
Jesus that is your control over this all. Great position. Oh